Welcome, and thank you for coming to our presentation. The title of our talk is Evaluating English Bento, a multi-skill language learning platform. What is English Bento? English Bento is a multi-skill language learning platform delivered on mobile devices that gives students opportunities to train speaking, listening, as well as other English skills such as grammar and vocabulary. It includes in-app metrics and allows teachers to set assignments and track progress, score, and time on task using a web-based dashboard. In this presentation, first I will give a brief overview of the app, followed by how the app was used in two different classroom settings. Then I will remark on the free comments made by students from the survey. First, a review of how little time learners actually have for speaking practice in class. A typical university class is 90 to 100 minutes for 14 or 15 weeks a semester. This gives a total of about 23 class hours per semester. However, if you subtract the first and last class because of orientation, review, wrap-up, syllabus explanations, a skipped class from students, you subtract a class for the midterm test and another for the final test. Then if you subtract about 10 or 15 minutes at the beginning of each class to, for everyone to settle down and a similar amount at the end and possibly some time for logistical issues, the teacher is left with about 60-ish minutes for about 10 classes. So from 23 class hours per semester down to about half that. Most students spend more time at their part-time jobs per week than the amount of time speaking English per semester. Overall, students will have less than 10 class hours a semester and much less time actually speaking. That's not much time to learn anything, let alone gain skill in speaking a second language. So let me drive the point home a little bit more. The calculation might be a little bit better or worse, but the point is that there is not much time for students to practice speaking, even in speaking classes. This situation is recognized in the field of extensive reading. A lot can be said about extensive reading programs, but in essence, they can be boiled down to a few basic elements. The most important being lots of level appropriate reading. That's it. Time on task. Yes, there are more factors, but it comes down to the more time the learner engages with level appropriate materials, the more they learn. When it comes to quality speaking opportunities outside of class, there are not many choices. And this is where the app English Bento comes in. Simply put, English Bento is a multi-skilled training app that gives students speaking and listening opportunities while tracking all their progress and sending the data to the teacher's dashboard. One of the features that I like is the sentence by sentence feedback and sentence level audio tracks. Students do not have to listen to the entire passage or dialogue and then start speaking. If anything, the listen and say activity is like shadowing practice at the sentence level. If it were just an app that randomly popped up lessons, it wouldn't be much use to the teacher. But that's not the case. The teacher sets the assignments with lessons of their own choice and then tracks all their progress including score, questions attempted, and time on task. Assignments can be set to be whatever time duration needed, and they can be adjusted as necessary. So because there is an existing library of content, the teacher does not have to input tons of material with audio. All they have to do is decide how long each assignment would be and set the start and end dates. For those of you who have not had a chance to download and try out the app, Let's watch this short video to orient ourselves before we get into how English Bento was used in two different class settings. This is a brief overview of English Bento, the app and the teacher's dashboard. On the left side of the screen, you will see the app. It's a screen capture of my iPhone. And on the right side of the screen, you will see the teacher's dashboard. There are a lot of features, so we will just go over the highlights. When you first open the app, you will see School and Personal. On the right hand side, the student will click School and they will go to the login screen. They add their credentials 
click login and go to the first screen within the app. So from here, I will go back and forth from the teacher's dashboard to the app so you can see their connection. First, within the app on the left side of the screen, the student will go to My Classes. If they're enrolled in multiple classes, you will see the list of classes here. On the right hand side is the teacher's dashboard and you can see that the teacher, Holly Burton, has five classes. And this student is enrolled in two of them, Presentations 3 and Listening and Speaking. Presentations 3 is grayed out because the end date has already been reached. So here the student can press Listening and Speaking and enter that class. What they will see is a list of all the assignments. This assignment list was created from the teacher's dashboard. Let's take a look. On the teacher's dashboard, I click the class and I see the exact same list of assignments. Wherever there is locks, the assignment due date has already been passed. So from here, the teacher sets assignments and as soon as you create the assignment, it's sent to the app. In this case, there's three active assignments, Unit 2, Unit 5, and Unit 6. Let's take a look at Unit 5. On the dashboard, you see that Unit 5 consists of Lesson 50, 51, 53, and 54. In the app, if I click on that assignment, you will see the same lessons. So, let's focus on the app for a minute. Each lesson within the app has a number of activities based on that lesson. There's listen and say, texting, build, how many, definition, and comp cue. Let's go to listen and say. So at the bottom, you will see listen mode and say mode. In listen mode, you can listen to the entire conversation or article or whatever it happens to be. There are different types of content, articles, emails, dialogues, sentences. So here you will see that the audio is playing automatically in listen mode and the Japanese translation is at the bottom of the screen. When I switch to listen mode, in listen mode the audio will play and then the speech to text will kick in, listen to what the student says, and then display that on the screen and compare it to the target sentence. For example, which way does it say? Turn here, go straight for three. You can see that in the sentence for Mike, he said, go straight for three. But in the target, there are red and green words indicating whether they were correct or incorrect. The student can then repeat the sentence as many times as they like. Last, before we leave listen and say, you'll notice that there is a point system at the top. So there is a target score of 1,540 points. And this is because each word is worth 20 points. So let's leave listen and say. And you can see that the number of points that you have is displayed in the finger, if you will. Each activity works a different skill. So let's just skip texting and go straight to build. And we see that we have words, but they're actually chunks. We're lost, Mike, we're lost. Now, if you make mistakes, you can't get a maximum of 100 points. Each question is worth 100 points. Didn't you set your Navi on your phone? So if you don't make any mistakes, you get 100 points. No, I thought I could make a mistake. Turns red, find it without. So if you make mistakes, you start losing points very quickly. That is build. You can see that it's not on a word by word basis. It's on a chunk by chunk basis. Let's leave build. How many is an interesting one. You listen to the audio and count the number of words. 
Was it five? No. And if you make a mistake, it plays again. This sentence had three words. Mike, we're lost. Definition is either a definition or synonym. You have to tap the word which the definition refers to. A map system. Didn't you set your Navi on your phone? Navi. Now, if it takes too long, you lose points. If you make a mistake, you lose points. To not have. Without. I will. I'll. Okay. And in comprehension question, touch the word to answer the question. What's wrong? They're lost. This is a yes-no question. Did he set his navi? No, I thought I could find it without my navi. Did he set his navi? No. Okay. Each lesson has roughly the same set of activities, but the content varies. Let's look at this. This is a monologue. The students practice it sentence by sentence. Once the student goes through all of the lessons, they will get a score for that lesson and it is displayed in the assignments menu. Let's go back to the dashboard. If we look now at directions and we go inside the directions, I can see the list of students and all of their progress. The most important column is the summary column. I can sort by progress, score, or time. You'll notice that there are one, two, three, four lessons. And you can even see the progress, score, and time for each individual lesson and how long they spent on it. And you can see the score. By using the progress score and time, you can quickly evaluate how well your students are doing. If I want to export all of this data, I can click the export button and get a CSV file. Finally, in the help menu, all the actual content for the lessons are listed here. So if I was using the ebook called Conversations, I could download the ebook very quickly and see what was actually in each lesson. So, for example, in this lesson on restaurants, you can actually see the text for the monologue and you can see the text for the dialogue or whatever content happened to be in that ebook. And all of the lessons are listed here. There is a whole host of other features. In the settings panel, you have audio playback speed, you have text size adjustment, you have some difficulty, you have translations, and some other settings. And that concludes the basic overview for the English Bento app. Okay, two different class settings. Because English Bento keeps track of score, progress, and time, we decided that we could use it to assess our students. Score became a proxy for their ability or learning. Progress would measure whether they attempted the questions or not, or effort. And time on task would measure the length of study time. So we decided to use English Bento in two different learning situations and see how it fared. The first was an intensive two-week remedial program that allowed students to earn an English credit. The app accounted for over 60% of their workload with textbook worksheets accounting for the remainder. The second setting was an existing listening and speaking remote course which gave intermediate level students the opportunity for significant speaking and listening practice. At the end of each program, a survey with open-ended and like Hertz scale questions was administered to students to gauge their experience. So in the 14-week regular class, English Bento was used for about 45 minutes of homework for about 10 weeks. We'd taken four of the questions and made charts 
from the survey. So question one, how much did you enjoy using the app to learn English? There is a Likert scale from one to five, five being high, one being low. And you will see that the trend for all four questions is very similar. First one, enjoy English. Second one, how effective do you feel you could learn English with the app? The third one was how well do you feel that you could improve your English listening? And the fourth one was how well do you feel you can improve your English speaking? So enjoyment, effectiveness, listening, improve listening and improve speaking. The trends essentially were the same. So for this class, there were about 67 respondents. And you can see that those students who scored fours and fives was always over 60%. And actually the trend is very similar. The trend is very similar for the two week intensive class. There were over 370 respondents and we are getting about a 55 to 60% respondent rate for ratings four and five. And you can see that the trend continues for both listening and speaking. So this is for the 14 week class and this is for the two week intensive class. So next I would like to move on to free comments within the survey. After the Likert questions were completed, there was a section where they could make a free comment, uh, whether they liked or disliked the app or write anything they liked and they could do it in English and Japanese. So just using about 340, 350 respondents for the intensive program, we had about a 50% respondent rate for uh, the free comments. This was an optional comment section. About half of them wrote a comment either in English or Japanese, and it was then translated into English. So on the left hand side, we have the count. So that four, and then we categorized all the comments and that was comment. And then we gave an example of that category. We categorized comments such as it's fast paced. The tempo was good as pacing was good. So let me read the example and then give you the grouping. So another four people said things like the fact that I could do the same thing over and over again in different ways. I could do many things with one sentence where I had to repeat the same content over and over in different ways. So that's every sentence is a different person. So there's actually three different respondents there, three different examples. And we categorize these types of comments as reuse the same content in different activities. And we'll come, we'll come back to this point in a minute. You'll see that there are some nuanced categories. We could have lumped them all into the same, but we'll come back to this when we have the comparison. So five respondents said things like the percent of display or I can see how much I know or being able to see how much I know. So we categorize this as scoring and progress indicators were useful. Six people said things like good for learning English words, the ability to build vocabulary. So if it had such words as vocabulary or learn new words, then we categorize this as good for learning new words and vocabulary. Nine people said things like the buttons were easy to understand and well organized. The GUI is easy to understand. It was designed in such a way that I could solve the questions on my own. I like that it felt like a game. So we categorize this as good design. 11 people said things such as it was good that I could check my own pronunciation. You can remember the pronunciation. And we differentiated this from a previous category, uh, vocabulary or words, when the word pronunciation was used. Now, 11 people commented things like the fact that I could repeat and redo questions over and over again. And this is differentiated from the comments like the fact that I can do the same thing over and over again in different ways. But this one is just referring to the ability to repeat the same question, not specifically practiced in a different skill, but repeat the same question so that you can get a better score or improve your, your ability. And 12 people volunteered things like, it was fun, I had fun while doing it, and we categorize that as fun. 
12 people categorized, 12 people said things like, I can do it anywhere from my cell phone. So we categorize that as convenient because it's on the cell phone. Now we're getting into larger numbers. 14 people commented that the speaking part, it's good because I can also vocalize. So when they mentioned that they enjoyed speaking, we categorize that as can improve speaking skills. And then you can do well in both listening and speaking or such comments as the fact that I can listen to English anytime I want. We're categorized with listening. Then 28 people said things like, I can learn various skills. It's easy to study because you can do everything from listening to speaking. I can study thoroughly. And last, 33 people said it was easy to use with such comments as simple and easy to use or skayasui. So if you add those up, that's about a 50% respondent rate to free comments. Uh, what did you like or dislike about the app? And the comment section was optional. So that's why we had only about, it was about 49% respondent rate. Final comments. Uh, these were very representative of the overall survey. Comments such as listening to the English sentences and counting words was good listening practice. That is referring to the how many activity where you listen to the English sentence and you count the number of words. This doesn't tend to be very obvious what English skill it's practicing. The ability to listen and not add extra words or skip words helps the student to repair any broken interlanguage or non-native interlanguage. There were comments, it's easy to use because you can do everything from listening to speaking. This app is multi-skilled. It's not just speaking, but there's listening, grammar, vocabulary, and an interlanguage repair activity. I could repeat the same content over and over in different ways. This refers to the ability to repeat questions and also the recycling of materials with different English skills. So it's not a one trick pony and it incorporates repetition without boredom. And lastly, this comment pretty much summarizes the positive comments from the students. I was motivated by the fact that I could feel myself growing as I became able to listen to the listening over and over again. So this refers specifically to the ability to repeat questions where everyone's weak point is different and you're able to focus on your own weaknesses in order to improve. So that was evaluating English Bento, a multi-skill language learning platform. Thank you for listening.